Y'all get ready. Yes, you get ready. You want the latest news in the streets? Join us and tune in for the tea. Breaking news with integrity. So sell your friends and your family. It's the lovely TV show. Bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the lovely TV show. Be sure to share, like, and subscribe. Hey, tea sippers. I hope you guys are doing good today. So I'm back with another reaction slash, you know, me and my little vlogging area. I hope everybody's doing good. I wanted to do a video yesterday and also have a Zoom meeting, but I was not feeling good. Uh, the weather keeps switching up, lots of rain, so I just kind of laid in bed all day yesterday. But I was still keeping up with the tea, okay? And we're definitely going to get into that. Um, before I head out in a little bit, I'm about to go to a boat party, so got to head up out of here. But before I leave, I wanted to do a video. So if you guys do not know, yesterday, Meg the Stallion, honey, she dropped another track. It's called Rattle and she is definitely rattling the internet right now because in the song Rattle, she's definitely taking shots at her former friend, now nemesis, Nicki Minaj. And guess what? I'm here for it, bitch, okay? So we're going to go ahead and listen to a snippet of Rattle because she definitely went in. Y'all go ahead and check this out. And it's about shit that we did. And I ain't worried about the bitter bitch link up. Y'all hoes earned them seats in the fan club. Ain't got no tea on me. This whole thing yeah. she TMZ. Ain't got no tea on me. This whole thing, she's TMZ. I love that part. I'm like, okay, Meg. Meg said she's not playing with y'all. She don't care about y'all linking up with Nikki. Y'all are bitter. You know what I'm saying? Like I've always said, if you want to hear a rap battle, it needs to be between Meg and Nikki. Because remember when they were linking up and, you know, throwing shots at Cardi? And Meg was like, you know, she actually writes. Meg actually writes. You know what I'm saying? Meg is actually a talented rapper. I'm never going to take that away from her. And, of course, we know Nicki Minaj, you know, like, she's been in the game for a long time. Of course, we all understand and appreciate Nicki's talent as well. So, so it's going to be very interesting to see if Nicki Minaj ends up responding back to her or she's just going to, you know what I'm saying, mind her business and continue on her tour, which is very, very successful, by the way. So definitely congratulations to Nicki and the Barbs. Y'all have definitely showed out and supported her. So, you know, it's good to see this. Again, it's friendly competition. Nothing wrong with it. We sat here and we praised Kendrick and Drake for going back and forth. They kept us in a chokehold for weeks okay so i'm definitely here for megan throwing her shots and letting it be known y'all will not play with me i'm here to take the crown i'm that bitch okay hate it or love it i'm that girl so it's gonna be very interesting to see like i said if the queen steps off her throne and responds back to megan please just don't respond back in the way that you did before okay with bigfoot yeah please fresh bars, things we've never heard, you know what I'm saying, go hard, okay? Don't go on a rant, giving us your lyrics, and then run to the studio to go record, okay? That's all I'm saying. So now in other news, okay, if you guys do not know, I have been saying this for years, and so has many people who are into sports. We all saw the writing on the wall. So the NBA draft was just yesterday. Well, it started two days ago. But um, LeBron's son, he was drafted. And like I said, a lot of us have stated this years ago. Now, what was very interesting, a lot of people were clowning Brownie because he was not in the first round draft. So he was trending on Twitter. Folks were roasting him. And, you know, if you really keep it with sports, like, you're not shocked that he wasn't a first round pick because his stats are not first round stats. There were people who were way better than Bronny. I just had to keep it real. So I'm not shocked at all that he was drafted 55. Now, a lot of people, you know, feel bothered. They feel like this is nepotism and, you know, it's unfair. But can people really say that they're shocked? I mean, this has been the conversation for years. I said years ago, that's why the elder LeBron went to Cali because he knew his son was going to one of the top schools out there to play, Sierra Canyon. And so it just made sense that LeBron went to LA, okay? So let's go ahead and watch this old clip from just a few months ago when they were asking Bronny about him potentially being drafted. You did end up uh, like on the Lakers or wherever your, your dad ends up playing. What would that mean to you if you two ended up being on the same team? Obviously it's been talked about for a long time. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, it's, it's, I don't, I don't think I would just like, when I get there, I don't think it would be like, just be like me and my dad. Like I would, I would, you know, I would be happy about getting to the league instead of me thinking about playing with my dad. Um, but that's like not my mindset right now at all. I'm just trying to put in the work and see where it takes me from there.
All right, so you guys just heard what he had to say. He was trying so hard to hold back that big old smile. One thing I do love about Bronny is that he's very media trained and he's very humble, but anybody with common sense knew, child, that he was going to go play for the Lakers with his daddy because they're definitely trying to build that LeBron James legacy, okay? So it's very funny that he was trying to be humble and act like, well, you know, it may happen. Yeah, sir, we know it's going to happen, okay? None of us are shocked. So let's go ahead and watch a news clip where they're talking about the draft here on Good Morning America. Morgan, back with a reaction to all of the fallout of my son, Bronny. Hey, DeMarco. George, good morning to you. Two words, history and legacy, both awaiting King James and his firstborn son, Bronny, as the father-son duel set out to do something the league has never witnessed before. Bronny James is headed to the NBA. The Los Angeles Lakers select... Bronny James. Yeah. James selected as the 55th overall pick, saying he's beyond blessed on social media. The Lakers posting Bronny's picture along with his father, the NBA's all-time leading scorer, LeBron James. LeBron James, a shot in history. He won't be alone anymore. The two men could make history as the first father-son duo to play in the NBA. LeBron talking with our Michael Strahan last year about the possibility. You're looking forward to sharing the NBA court with Bronny. Yeah, 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 yeah. So that means you're going to stick around for a few more years, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, I'll be around. I'll be around. <laughs> I told him, I said, listen, I did my part. Now you got to do your part. <laughs> I don't know how much longer, but you got to do your part. <laughs> LeBron posted a picture of the father-son duo on Instagram with the caption, Legacy. 19-year-old Bronny's college career was sidelined after going into cardiac arrest, collapsing on the court during a workout last July. He subsequently underwent surgery to repair a congenital heart defect with the panel of doctors clearing him to play in the NBA last month. He played just one season for USC. Now he'll play in the big game. And we'll all be watching. I mentioned. All right. So you guys just saw that clip. So like I said, they are definitely making history, but I have to keep it real. OK, this is why I got to keep it 100. Um, he's definitely got in because he's LeBron James's son, because like I said, Per his stats and the way that he played, there were other, you know what I'm saying, better options for the Lakers, but I understand they're trying to build a legacy. But what does kind of worry me is the pressure that's gonna be on this 19 year old kid, okay? Cause he's still a teenager. So you got the pressure of people going to constantly compare him to his father. Do I believe that he had that he deserved a slot in the NBA? Yes, but I think him playing on the same team as his father on the Lakers, that is a lot of pressure because that was a lot of pressure when it was, you know, Lonzo Ball and LeBron, you know? So now to have his son there, yes, it's the legacy, but stat-wise, he's not the same player, nor is he on the same level as his father was at that age. I mean, even when you look at them, LeBron is huge. Bryce has more of LeBron's, frame bryce is a younger brother he has more of lebron's frame and size and honestly bryce is the better player out of the two in my personal opinion but i still love the legacy but it's definitely nepotism like let's keep it real you know what i'm saying if Bronny wasn't related to anybody in the nba i don't think he had been drafted and that's just my honest opinion so he's been drafted he's going to play for the lakers so definitely good luck to him but i also worry about that heart defect you know what i'm saying that's something serious so i just hope and pray that he does not you know he's not under so much stress to keep it with his father that it also takes a toll on his heart because you know technically that's a very serious issue even though he was cleared to play you just never know and they're comfortable enough where if he didn't go into the nba he'll be okay you know what i'm saying but yeah the nba is definitely turning into you know the nepotism league and i know there was really interesting conversations on TikTok um a few weeks ago about how there's no more basketball players coming from the trenches like all of these you know nba players are kids of nba players and you know they've been training since they were literally in elementary school they're going to the best camps they have the best trainers you know it, it's just it is what it is unfortunately it's a whole different ball game now and yeah you might be able to ball in your hood court but if you're not going to one of these expensive private schools or you're not you know paying thousands of dollars for aau and getting on one of the top aau teams you're not going to get visibility unfortunately that's just what it is now in sports and it's not just the nba 
it's in all sports. You know, it, it's really about who you know and, and who you're cool with in, the, in those certain circles. So either way, good luck to Bronny. You know what I'm saying? I do love this, the first father and son to play officially. I think LeBron is tired. I don't believe that LeBron's gonna be playing for several more years to come. He's literally been playing basketball and football since elementary school. You know what I'm saying? I know them damn bones, honey. Okay, he is in his 40s now. He has to be tired, okay? He still looks damn good, but I know like physically he has to be tired, you know, and it's about time that he retires. So I think he's gonna play this last year with Bronny and then eventually he's gonna do his retirement and maybe he'll start, you know, t working for ESPN and doing commentary or something, but I don't see him playing for like another five, six years. I don't even see him waiting to try and get Bryce into the NBA. Cause I can definitely see Bryce getting drafted. His stats are looking really good. And like I said, he has the height, he has a physique. I don't even see LeBron staying that long to allow Bryce to come in, but that's just my opinion. We don't know what's gonna happen in the future, but good luck to Bronny. We see you, we peeped it years ago and we are happy for the James's family. So now last but not least child, we have to talk about this presidential debate. Okay, I laid up in bed yesterday like I said, I wasn't feeling too good. So I'm like, and shout out to the person who reminded me on Discord that the debate was going on. And I watched it and literally, all I could do was just shake my head at old man Joe. Like it was just so embarrassing. I'm like, is nobody embarrassed? But like, who put him up there? He just looked lost. He was going off, he was popping off. He just, it was so uncomfortable to watch. And we've been talking about, you know, his cognitive skills and his decline for years on this channel. So it's not a shock to me. But the fact that people on social media and the mainstream media are shocked, he's been acting this way. He's been, hey, Jill, I just want ice cream. He, he looks like he should, he looks like a dementia patient that should be like in a nursing home. I'm sorry. I get that he's the president, but I don't have any faith in him at this point. And now it's even worse. And what's very interesting is that a lot of Democrats are now giving Trump props and they're flipping sides and they're saying, yo, if y'all don't get somebody in here outside of Joe Biden, I I'm gonna vote for Trump because this is too much. So we're gonna go ahead and watch some of Joe Biden's highlights from yesterday. This entire situation is crazy. You continue to provoke, but it's so sad. We got it down to 15, excuse me, 35. We got a significant increase the credits. The idea, if you lose again, you... I will absolutely, there's nothing I'd rather do. President Trump, as I come back to you for a follow-up... Ever with me. And he's going to take How Ukraine. How much prescriptions I need. You know what that did? That reduced the federal deficit. We are very, very close to World War III. And, and but by the way, I told you before, I'm happy to play golf if you carry your own bag. Think you can do it? That's the biggest lie that he's just... You're in the middle of a presidential debate and you're asking your opponent to play golf and do you think you can do it? What, what are you talking about? This is a presidential debate. Do you think you can run the country? That's the question. Not anything about golf. Like this was like, it, it was like watching paint dry. This is how nerve wracking this was watching this debate. Six handicap of all. I was an eight handicap. Yeah. Eight. Never, but I have, you know how many, how, I've seen you swing, I know you swing. Okay, let's let's, let's, let's not, not act like children. children. President Trump, we're going to Let's run. not act like children. You to a, a specific child. concern. Like to see him take one, just one, a real easy one. Like go through the first five questions, he couldn't do it. Like any black student is capable in college of doing any white student can do. He just have the money, but now they'll be able to get. Oh, I've never seen him fire anybody, but I did fire a lot. I fired Comey because he was no good. I fired a lot of the top people at the FBI, drained the swamp. They were no good. Out of the Paris Peace Accord, uh, Climate Accord, we aged for 1.5 degrees Celsius. And China, nothing, and Russia, nothing, and India, nothing. We provided thousands and millions of jobs. We have covered, if the ACA has increased, I made sure that they're $8,000. The idea that we're not doing any, I put more, we put more police on the street than any administration has. He wants to cut the cops. We're providing for equity, equity and making sure people have a shot to make it. There's a lot going on now. And in, in addition to that, to die from pregnancy related causes and black Americans are and I spoke to all about those I don't think he knows what he said either look 
We had the safest border in the history of our country. On the, 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 the when I tell you President Trump or former President Trump, he was on fire yesterday. The shade he was throwing at him. He's like, I don't know. He, I don't even think he knows what he's saying right now. Like President Trump, and they're not that many years apart. It's not like President Trump is 50. They're relatively close around the same age. And you can see the difference in how they're able to speak and, and handle themselves and answer questions. It was really hard watching this. And at one point, Joe Biden snapped on Trump. So let's go ahead and watch this. He was standing with his four star general and he told me, he said, I don't want to go in there because they're a bunch of losers and suckers. My son was not a loser, was not a sucker. You're the sucker. You're the loser. I mean, that is really sad. He was having an episode on stage because that's how some dementia patients do where they'll just start snapping and going off. So this was really hard to watch. But of course, you have Kamala Harris and others, you know, trying to excuse this nonsense that we saw yesterday. So we're going to watch that as well. Listen, first of all, what we saw tonight is the president making a very clear contrast with Donald Trump on all of the issues that matter to the American people. Yes, there was a slow start, but it was a strong finish. And what became very clear through the course of the night is that Joe Biden is fighting on behalf of the American people on substance, on policy, on performance. Joe but Biden on, is extraordinarily strong. And but I'm that, sorry, that on substance and policy and performance tonight, I mean, his, the president's performance tonight clearly was disappointing for his supporters. CNN is reporting Democratic lawmakers watching the debate were worried uh, worried about the president's performance. One said it was a, a disaster. Another called it a train wreck. Those are Democrats especially worried that Biden did not punch back on Trump's lies. Uh, listen, people can debate on style points, but ultimately this election and who is the president of the United States has to be about substance. And the contrast is clear. Look at what happened during the course of the debate. Donald Trump lied over and over and over again, as he is wont to do. He would not disavow what happened on January 6th. He would not give a clear answer on whether he would stand by the election results this November. He went back and forth about where he stands on one of the most critical issues of freedom in America, which is the right of a woman to make decisions about their own body. He has been completely ambiguous and all over the place about where he stands on that issue, despite the fact that he hand selected three members of the United States Supreme Court with the intention that they would undo the protections of Roe v. Wade. And that's exactly what I can't take the gaslighting. That debate was terrible and she can try and gaslight and, you know, pinpoint this and pinpoint that. It was horrible. The way he demonstrated himself, the way he carried himself, that is not, to me, the leader of the free world. That is somebody that needs to be in a nursing home, being fed ice cream, being taken care of by his wife. He does not need to be running the country. Um, now let's go on to Jill Biden because she also had something to say. It just, it boggles the minds. Joe, you did such a great job. You answered every question. You knew all the facts. And let me ask the crowd, what did Trump do? Why? What you talking about, Willis? Like, what? Like, am I living in the upside down world? He answered all the questions, barely. And he was talking about stuff that had nothing to do with politics. Like, I get that's your man, honey. That's your husband. You gonna stand by your man like Tammy Wynette. I get that. But we also have to tell, you know what I'm saying? We also have to be women and let our men know when they done fucked up, okay? Like, the, the gaslighting that's coming from the Democratic Party right now is insane, okay? And then, child, they done found a video. He couldn't even get off the stage by himself. His wife had to help him down. Look at this video. It's all over Twitter. State focus group. We'll be talking to surrogates, including Vice President Harris, getting fact checks from our Daniel Dale and new reporting from inside Net. The first word on what those voters might make of it from our political professionals, from our CNN flash poll and swing state focus group. We'll be talking to surrogates, including Vice President Harris, getting fact checks from our Daniel Dale and new reporting from inside Net. The first all right, so y'all just saw those videos. So like I said, she literally had to help him walk down the steps. I didn't see, you know what I'm saying, Melania Trump up there helping her husband down the steps. 
you know, this is really disturbing. You had Van Jones on CNN about to cry. I mean, and I will say this, CNN definitely handled the debate well. They were fair. They weren't cutting off microphones. And, you know, to be honest with you, a lot of times that clock is what saved Biden. Because it's almost like he was just going on these long little tirades and then they'd have to say, you know, that's time, that's clock. And so that kind of saved him. Whereas if they just allowed him to talk, he'd just be talking about ice cream and frolicking, you know, in a field of daisies. It didn't make any sense. It's just like he was not there. You know, I just feel like honestly at this point, honestly at this point, I don't know what to think. I mean, we are literally looking like the laughing stock. And I don't think a lot of people who want to vote Democratic, because I don't really trust Trump like that either. OK, let me keep that real. But I think a lot of people who do want to vote Democratic, they're like, if this is my choice, I'm going to have to go over here because this is ridiculous. So I don't know what's going to happen. They may have, you know, what I'm saying uh, Newsom come in and take over because a lot of people don't like Kamala Harris either. Even though she should be like, let's say like he decides not to run, she's supposed to step up as VP. We don't know where she's at half the time. The only time we really see her is if they're doing something black at the White House and she's out there two-stepping and jigging and all that goofy stuff. Other than that, you don't see her. She's, she's gone most of the time. You just don't see her. So a lot of people do not feel comfortable with her ability to run the country either. So they may have to bring in Gruesome Newsome. I don't know. But this whole situation, that first political debate was embarrassing. Super embarrassing. I'm like, I can't even believe that this is what I'm watching right now. So, ciao. So these are my thoughts and my reactions to the viral stories that have been going viral in the past 24 hours. So I wanna hear from you guys. How do you guys feel about the entire situation? How do you guys feel about Meg Thee Stallion's new song, Rattle? And do you feel like Nicki Minaj will respond back to her? Um, how do you guys feel about Bronny finally getting drafted to the Lakers like so many of us already knew, okay? Um, do you guys think that this is going to be something good and positive for Bronny? Or do you guys think that it could cause him a lot more stress? How do you guys feel like he may do in the league? And then last but not least, what did y'all think about that damn debate, honey? Okay, I want to know what y'all think. Y'all go ahead, leave y'all's comments down below. I look forward to reading them. I will talk to you guys later. Enjoy your weekend. Deuces. If you want the latest news in the streets, join us and tune in for the tea. Breaking news with integrity, so sir, your friends and your family. It's the Lovely Tea TV Show. Bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the Lovely Tea TV Show. Be sure to share, like, and subscribe.